Okay, greetings everybody. And I am back to do the final part of this mystery box over here. Where's my Coke? Oh. Gotta open up a bottle of Coca-Cola. Ooh, I was thirsty. Hmm. Okay. Um, no beer today, man. It's really hot. Holy crap. It's like, uh, I don't know, my backyard thermometer said 108 with the sun beating down on it, you know, but I think official temperatures are probably about 101, 102 maybe. Ooh, it's a hot one. Anyway, getting back where I left off. Uncle Sam here. Oh, uh, in the last video I mentioned, I showed you this. Adventure in the Fear 19, and I left a little note uh, on the video on top over there that said this was the first appearance of uh, Howard the Duck. I forgot to mention it, so I did put a note up there, but first appearance of Howard the Duck. Not any big deal. Howard the Duck. You know that they were originally, Disney was suing them, suing Marvel because of uh, the character Howard the Duck was too much like uh, Donald Duck. Wonder whatever happened with that. Anyway. Oh! I wish I would have found these uh, in the last video because the 4th of July is over, but there's some buttons in here, man. You got uh, Operation Desert Storm. Holy crap. Another button the American flag. And USA kicks butt. I can never figure out what B U T T means. Hmm. Anyway, let me get a pile of these books out and yeah. There is Avengers in there, and I only saw the first top two. And I could have sworn that I had a had shown a copy of uh, Avengers number 11 before, so that must mean I have more than one copy. Avengers number number 11, I think that's the first crossover with Spider-Man. Uh, I think it's the first crossover Spider-Man ever ever did. Spider-Man Avengers. And this one is in uh, fine plus condition. Maybe find a very fine condition. Just judging by the cover. I haven't really taken it out of there yet. But uh, I always look at the spine and the corners first. Um, there's, oh, there's another number 11. But I that must mean I have three copies of number 11. This one looks to be in very good condition. So it's a little bit of a lesser grade, but uh, still a pretty nice copy. It has a looks like it has a crease right here. I don't know if you can see that right going right across, right there. Little crease right there. And it's a little bit of wear on a spine down there. Not. Not too bad, but so still looks like a very good copy. So that must mean I have three copies of this, because I know I probably I, sh I know I showed one of these in a video before, so I'm, I must have another one. Oh man, I gotta get my stuff straightened out here. Holy crap! Uh, Avengers number seven. That's the first Zemo. Looks to be in pretty nice shape. Probably a very good, maybe a very good plus. This wasn't the first Zemo, was it? No, this was. Uh... Oh, uh, you know what? Oh, here's another one. <laughs> another copy of number seven. I gotta rebag these things, man. They've been in that box seven years. A little bit of wear on the spine. This is uh, 
I remember this now. This has the um, Rick Jones over here. It's the first. He. It's, it's the first Silver Age appearance of Bucky, I think. Well, he's wearing a Bucky costume. It's, you know, he's put on the Bucky costume and pretends to be Cap's partner, Bucky. There's another copy of number seven. Now I know I got I got another copy of number eleven. This is uh got a little wear wear on it, wear on the cover, on the spine. It's got a little bit of wear, but uh, I was missing these things for seven years, man. That that box, I, I didn't know. I thought it was all toys in there. I could have pulled it out a long time ago. It, oh, this is uh, here's number uh, the first appearance of Zemo, Avengers number six. First appearance of uh, Zemo and the Masters of Evil. I love this cover. See some action going on there, you know, with the shield being just just being thrown, and uh, Iron Man using his uh, his force, uh, whatever whatever you call it. It's <laughs> great. Another copy of number six. This is probably in good, good plus condition. Yeah, this a little bit more heavy wear on the spine. Now I can, let me take it out of the bag. All that glare, I can't stand it. There, you can see it better too with the it being out of the bag. Yeah, it's got some spinal issues there. Some marble chipping starting at the top. <laughs> 1964. Well, that means I'm still missing some other books. I didn't know I had that many copies of number seven either. What the heck? Oh, next I have some Marvel Tales. I'm a Marvel Tales number one. This, of course, uh, reprints all the uh, all great origin stories: Sergeant Fury, the Hulk, Giant Man. It's the first issue, 72 pages for 25 cents. I wonder what. Oh, 1964. 1964, the year of the Beatles. Number Marvel Tales number two. Oh, I gotta rebag everything and put these away right away. So these are just great. Uh, oh, I've got another bag in there. These are great reprint issues, and uh, the fact that they that they came out uh, right at the, the Silver Age. Early Silver Age uh, Marvel superheroes at that time. I mean, that this came out during the time that Marvel was publishing all the Silver Age Marvel superheroes makes this uh, a little bit more expensive than other reprints uh, that they did later. Later, but uh, it's pretty nice though. I got almost a complete run of this, I'm pretty sure. Now that I find these, I'll have to show that sometime, get that together. Marvel Tales number three. Well, this is in high grade. It's a nice high grade copy. 
Take it out of the bag. Look at those corners, nice and sharp. Oops, what was that? Oh. No, that's too bad. Got a little blunt, I mean a little uh, color flake right there. Hmm, that's too bad. It's still in higher grade though. Just not uh, as high as I wanted it to be anymore. <laughs> Marble Tales number 20. What else I got in here? Oh, it's the last of it. This is the last of it. And hmm. well, it's all Marvel Tales. No more Avengers or anything else. Marvel Tales number twenty-five. Number 17, now they're reprinting mostly uh, Spider-Man comics. Number 23. Number 8. It's a high grade copy. Number 24. These are all pretty nice shape, it looks like to me. Only minor flaws. Number 16. And number 18. And that's all the comics that I got in there. One of these days I'll have to find another box with stuff and I hope there'll be uh, more goodies in there. See what else I got in here. No, oh, didn't they just show this? No, they didn't show this. Oh, Batman buttons, set two. Got a copyright of uh, 1989 back here. Cool World. There's a card from that movie, Cool World. I gotta reacquaint myself with that film. I remember uh, that was a pretty uh, cool animated uh, feature length movie. The Untold Legend of the Batman. You get a cassette tape and a comic book. I'm sorry about that. Until Legend of the Batman number two. I'll take this one out of here. This is pretty bad. Wow. Look at that. Kind of dirty. Sticky and dirty. Oh man. It's been in there a while, that's for sure. Hmm. Volume one, number two, from 1980. Hmm. 
This is a small comic, smaller than the regular. It looks like. Mm. See? It's regular size. I didn't. I don't remember buying <laughs> buying this stuff. Man. But it's kind of a cool uh, little item. Kind of a cool little item to have. Reprint some Batman covers in black and white, and it has a uh, stories in color. Hmm. I'll have to uh, maybe I'll even listen to this tape. That'd be kind of curious. This it's got a hefty bag. Whatever can this be? Oh, these look like more of my. Warriors of the World by Marx. Could that be? I have my scissors. Where's my scissors? Give me back my scissors, fool! Oh yeah, that's what they are. These are the pirates. Remember those uh, Warriors of the World by Marx that came out in the 60s, early 60s, mid 60s? They came in boxes. I think I showed some of that in one of my real early videos. I showed a, I had a box set of, uh, uh, I think they were Vikings. And, uh, these are cool. These are the pirates that they came out with. These these are these go for some uh, pretty nice bucks on eBay, man. Uh, Warriors of the World by Marx. Oh. Well, I'm not going to bore you with going through all of these and stuff, but there's another one that wasn't in the bag. Oh, that's cool to find these. Wow. I knew I had more of these Warriors of the World by Marx. Anyway. Uh, let's see what else they got. Oh, look at this. Whoa. Ay, ay, ay. What is this? <laughs> I remember this. Holy cow, it never even took them out of the bag. <laughs> the Batman and the Riddler walkie talkies. Holy shice. Holy shite and a breakfast stick. It's the Wookie Tookies. With special sound effects. Walkie talkies with special sound effects. I wonder what that means. Maybe it's not in your own voice. Oh, it was open too. Looks like I must have opened it at one point. Wow, that's pretty neat. From, uh, got a copyright trademark date back here, 1995. <laughs> what else is in here? Okay. Untold Legend of the Batman comic book number three with the uh, cassette tape. Oh, huh. I think I might listen to these tonight, man. Put them in the old cassette player and bring back some memories. Remember the 8-tracks? And if I'm not mistaken, I think they had... I think they, they might have, for, for a very brief period, had uh, four tracks or something. Oh! Looky here! The Rocketeer! Dave Stevens, The Rocketeer. And I have, uh, I just saw, uh, 
the video by the CTC Spirit in which he uh, showed his King Kong comic with the beautiful cover by Dave Stevens. And uh, this is, of course, The Rocketeer by Dave Stevens. He died so tragically young. Uh, some kind of a cancer, I, I believe. Really, really young. He became very close friends with uh, Betty Page, the uh, most famous 50s pinup girl. And uh, he modeled a lot of his characters after her. It must be 3D because there's 3D glasses up there. It says 3D comic. Look how, you know, you can't even really see it because it's, it doesn't do, I gotta take it out of here. I mean, this is, this is really dirty. I don't know. Maybe I better not, maybe I better leave it in the bag or something. I don't know. But anyway. And then there's this, what is this, Batman the Cult? Six dollars. I hope that's not what I paid for this thing. It's a poster, obviously. Not Batman the Cult. What is it? What in the world? What is this? It's DC. Enemy Ace. Got a sticker on there. Had a sticker on the back that said Batman the Cold. I don't know. No, dropped it. I don't know what happened to the sticker now. It was on there. Anyway. What else I got? Holy moly. Batman keychain. Definitely there's a bunch of stuff in this what I just showed you that I'm going to use as uh, raffle giveaways. With the next raffle I do. That Batman keychain for instance. and Probably throw in a bunch of these posters. You know just for the heck of it. Oh! Will you look at that? I don't believe it. I found a Spawn number 1 signed by Todd McFarlane. Look at that. I, the, I must have these all over the damn place. I'm not kidding you. These must be everywhere. And I know I had like oh, man, at least seven copies signed by uh, Todd McFarlane. There's one. Anyway. I gotta re bag all this stuff. And then there's another poster. Supreme. Uh, it's signed by. Looks like Brian Murray. I'm not sure. Um, if anybody recognizes that signature right there. It looks like Brian Murray might have. Yeah, it had to be because he signed it right above his name there. Of course. Duh. What in the world is, is this? <laughs> you know, they, they must have came out with all sorts of gimmicks. I mean, look at this. It just. Worst character I know of, you know, Cyclops. And a little glass over it, and I suppose you can put it in here, and then you'd have a nice frame or something. I don't know. It's ridiculous. I must have. Somebody must have gave me that. Oh, here's a, a mini comic, Supreme, and this looks like it has some signatures on it. Oh, my hands are so dirty there from all this stuff. Number 41. Out of I don't know how many copies, but uh, uh, it looks like it's also signed by uh, Brian Murray.
image. This must have been a, one of them ash can issues or something. I don't know. Anyway. Some nice colors on there. I like the colors on this thing. It's got green, yellow, and red. My favorite comic book colors. And let's see here. Some more posters. What is this? The Ultraverse. I don't know what that is. Yeah, these are all posters that I could throw in, you know, with, along with the, the comics. Just as a little added extra or something when I do the next raffle. I wonder where these came from. Ghost Rider. I think this is the Badger, but I'm not sure. Somebody else might know who that is. Looks like the Badger. I don't know. And let's see this poster right here. Uh, Youngblood, Rob Liefeld, Malibu Comics. The Fun Company, of course, Malibu. And, uh, I guess this is something to put a figure in, you know, uh, stick it in there and it'll stand up. That's it. A couple of old copies of the price guide. Number 21. 21st edition of the price guide. 20th edition of the price guide. <laughs> yeah, well, it's very interesting. And uh, I have a box. Oh, <laughs> could be a long video. Uh, might as well show you this. I was just talking to you about, wow, about the uh, Warriors of the World by Marx. And uh, here's more. And these are the boxes that they came in from the early 1960s. Remember those, uh, anybody that's around my age can remember those TV commercials uh, for the Warriors of the World by Marx? Warriors of the World by Marx. Warriors of the World by Marx. Oh. Marius. The Roman soldier. And this is how they came. This is very cool. And sometimes they came in a long box set, a bunch of them, five or six of them, and they would have cards on the back. This is nice. Look at that. Wow. This is so cool. Eric the Red. Warren. Painted by hand by artists. What that means is probably it was uh, painted by hand by artists in Japan. No, Hong Kong. Sorry, Hong Kong. Well, James Henry, Roger Case. That box got crushed. That's too bad. Peter Hayes, Roger Case, James Henry. They all look the same to me. So another warrior, a Viking warrior, another Viking warrior here. Wow. I remember having these as a kid. 
Holy cow, there's a whole bunch of them in here, man. Wow. Gosh almighty. I don't remember having a uh, World War II. World War II German private. Another pirate. Tom Veal. Tom Veal. That's making me hungry. I think I'll have myself a pork chop later on. <laughs> With James Henry again. Where'd he come from? I thought I saw you somewhere. What is this? General Longstreet. Oh, man. I bet you Hippies Collectible knows who General Longstreet is because I have no idea. But Hippies Collectible probably does. It'll probably tell me, too. And then there's a couple more bags of uh, Warriors of the World. These look to be pirates again. But anyway, that's about it. Uh, some buttons in here yet, you know, I don't know. It's just Joker candy that got all leaky and it came out and every, I got sticky. That's probably what I'm feeling on my hands, I don't know. Well, anyway, yeah, look, I got all that stuff down there now. Okay, well, that was all that was in that box there. And uh, like I said, a lot of that stuff that I just showed you from that box, I'm going to probably end up giving those away in a raffle, future raffle. And, uh, well, that's about it for now. I can't think of nothing else. Oh, you know what? Speaking of marks... Mark's Toy Company. Around 1961-62, they came out with uh, the dinosaurs. Uh, well, they came out early. They had earlier dinosaurs as well. I mean, in, in you know, blister packages from the late 50s, early 60s. But every year that they would come out or reintroduce those sets, they would be a different color or something. Uh, but mostly the same dinosaurs. This thing... It's an original, uh, they call it a potbelly uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. And i seen this on eBay going for as high as $100. I'm not kidding you. A hundred bucks for this thing. And this is my original one that I kept. You know, I kept a lot of my toys from that time period. Thank God my mother didn't throw everything out. Threw out all my baseball cards. I had... Uh, Oh man, I, I don't even want to talk about all the rookie cars I had from baseball. I had shoe boxes full, and I never paid that much attention to the baseball uh, cards, you know, as I did with the comics and stuff. And then one day she got tired of them laying around. You know, I used to make houses and knock them down and stuff. And <laughs> I had Ernie Banks rookie card in there, all sorts of stuff. One day they were just thrown out because I had them all over the place anyway. But other stuff that I maintain a real good interest in my mom would always save for me and didn't throw out a hundred bucks I can't believe it man anyway all right guys thanks for tuning in and um, hopefully I can get that other video I've been talking about up there uh, with the uh, the swamp man debate okay take care guys <laughs>